Welcome to the Long Island Pine Barren Society program. Kathleen Nasta is off today, but I'm going to take you to highlights of the Long Island Clean Water Partnerships What Are We Going to Do conference that's aimed at reversing the decline in water quality across Long Island. The Roush Foundation is sponsoring it. David North is MC, and I see he's headed for the podium, so let's join him. It is my honor to host this event on behalf of the Long Island Clean Water Partnership. Since its creation five years ago, the partnership has grown to include more than 100 businesses and organizations and more than 17,000 individuals. And we'd also like to thank the Roush Foundation for sponsoring this event and for their continuous support in their efforts to protect Long Island's environment. This year, we're enthusiastic about specific actions now underway to improve our water quality for all of Long Island. And this is a good day. We'll be hearing from elected officials, environmentalists, agency representatives, citizen activists, and scientists about the tremendous progress we've made during the past year and reasons to be enthusiastic about taking on the challenges ahead. This morning, here to speak on behalf of our region's largest, most influential business organization is the president of the Long Island Association. Please help me in welcoming our first speaker, Mr. Kevin Law. A pleasure to be here. You know, it's often said, you know, our environment and our economy are just really inextricably linked. Our economy is our environment. Our environmental challenges are economic development opportunities. And so figuring out new ways to do things is uh, critical, and not only to protect the environment, it could also lead to new technology and new jobs. So uh, have a good program and a good day. I look forward to seeing you and working with you in the near future. And our next speaker is the principal leader in the development of the Long Island Nitrogen Action Plan. He's the Assistant Commissioner for Water Resources for New York State, Mr. Jim Tierney. This is a major partnership on nitrogen, and it truly is a partnership. And I just want to emphasize this effort towards the Long Island Nitrogen Action Plan is in no way something coming in from Albany. Everything has been ground up, it's been developed from the ground up. It's being made by, to happen by you all. And DEC is there to help. We want to be a big part of this effort. We want to provide money. We want to provide technical expertise. But this, if it's going to succeed, is going to be a locally driven, locally developed, locally implemented, implemented partnership. And I just want to say that at the outset, that this is something that you've really made happen, and I should take great pride in it. Uh, I really want to thank the Long Island Clean Water Partnership for what they're doing and announce today that we do, with all your efforts, and many people put in a lot of time on this, have a scope of the Long Island Nitrogen Action Plan. It was finalized this week. It's available. Angus Eaton is here. We have copies. Um, and this is a, a program, uh, Kevin Law was involved in it, others were involved in it, where it started off with a $5 million allotment for a nitrogen action plan here on Long Island. We've gone around, we had meetings uh, in, in the fall, other meetings earlier this year in February where, where we brought people in. Uh, the Nature Conservancy, the, the group for the East End, everybody else had at it. I think Dr. Gobler here, he had at it. And we scoped out what we need to do to actually take on and understand the problem of nitrogen in Long Island. Another thing are the big projects that are underway. Uh, see Pete Scully here. I, I think Rob Walker is on the agenda here today, working on projects with, with Pete from, from, Long I from, from Suffolk County for a $388 million program in Suffolk County to begin, and I do mean begin the process, of sewering some septic hotspots 
uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the southern portion of Suffolk County, but not to be outdone is Nassau County with the $830 million rebuild of the Bay Park Wastewater Treatment Plant. And on top of that is nitrogen treatment. On top of that is the hope of bringing Long Beach into Bay Park. And on top of that is an ocean outfall to finally get that nitrogen out of the western bays and, and protect that once magnificent water body that's been grossly impaired. All right. Um, Hal Walker, Chris Gobler, Jen Garvey, and the creation of a clean water technology center at SUNY Stony Brook, job one being uh, advanced nitrogen septic systems that are smaller, that are less expensive, that are easy, easy to maintain and more effective in order to handle the 360,000 septic systems that exist in Suffolk County and the many tens of thousands of septic systems that exist in, in Nassau and need to be addressed. And the last thought I want to leave you with is from Governor Cuomo. Uh, Governor Cuomo was down here recently talking about water issues, drinking water issues and the like. And he stated in announcing a rapid response team on drinking water, something more broadly, that quote, every New Yorker has a fundamental right to clean and safe drinking water and that water is a priceless resource that requires the highest level of protection. The governor knows about what you're up to. He supports it enthusiastically. And I want to bring that message to you going forward. Together, we're going to get this job done. Thank you very much. And our next speaker is the chairman of the Long Island Regional Planning Council, John Cameron. The Long Island Regional Planning Council actually has a uh, very storied history on water quality here on Long Island, going back to our predecessor, the Long Island Regional Planning Board, under the uh, leadership of Lee Koppelman, where in back in uh, actually the 1970s, when the Long Island 208 study was done to manage our uh, and to provide guidance and a major plan for our water and wastewater infrastructure here on Long Island. Uh, the Regional Planning Council actually most recently, um, a little over five years ago, in the development of its LI 2035, our uh, sustainability plan for Long Island, where we developed a plan uh, in four thematic areas being tax and governance, the economy, environment, infrastructure, and equity, recognized, as Kevin Law alluded to earlier, that uh, the environment and our economy are inextricably linked together. The Long Island Regional Planning Council, Council strongly supported, strongly supported uh, County Executive Ballone's initiative to try and get wastewater managed on a countywide basis. Now, we know there's a number of issues here, a lot of them extraneous and unrelated to the merits of the plan. And most of you here, a lot of the organizations who are involved here and the environmental groups also strongly supported uh, County Ballone's, uh, County Executive Ballone's initiative. But uh, that one, we believe, will be resurrected maybe in a, a more, uh, more hospitable, a little more a better political climate to get that done. But um, we're hoping to get that move forward because, frankly, we're not going to be able to resolve our major environmental challenges here, water quality challenges, if we don't deal with it on a regional basis here. <laughs> just a li little history here, just, uh, just uh, to sort of uh, distill the issues here on, we all know this too, groundwater, drinking water, uh, surface waters here, whether it's nitrogen we talked about, and J Jim Tierney alluded to the uh, Long Island Nitrogen Nitrogen Plan, which we're co-managing with them. And frankly, I have to give a shout out to the environmental organizations because Jim had mentioned the $5 million that was included in the uh, New York State budget. And that's thanks to the Nature Conservancy Citizens Campaign for the Environment, Long Island Pine Barren Society, and the Group for the East End. Frankly, without their if you will, persistence, working with the State Senate, that money would not be there. And we wouldn't be talking about a nitrogen action plan today. We do not have a, a reliable and a sustained funding stream to deal with the, the challenges of uh, whether it's sewer creation or dealing with a lot of other contamination issues here. And if it were not for Superstorm Sandy, we would not have had $388 million for uh, sewering Suffolk County. We wouldn't have the $800 plus million for uh, 
for uh, Bay Park improvements. So frankly, we need to develop a funding stream that's going to be able to enable us to implement the necessary infrastructure to correct and deal with our, our uh, challenges here. This is, this is work we all need to be able to be putting our best talents forward to make sure that we, we actually see implementation and not just develop another, another nice study that sits on the shelf. So thank you very much and look forward to working together. And our next speaker is described as tenacious. He is the Deputy County Executive for Administration for Suffolk County, the tenacious Peter Scully. It's good to see everybody. John, uh, thanks for your leadership and for your blunt talk. It's been a pleasure to work with you over the past few months, both on the Nitrogen Action Plan and on development of a, a funding stream. This is a cover of the Suffolk County Comprehensive Water Resources Management Plan issued in March of 2015. Many of you are familiar with it. The county executive uh, got it out of being stuck in the mud and advanced it. It's a, certainly an historic document. It deals with a, a variety of topics as indicated here. I want to acknowledge for some people in the, in the room that both water reuse and water conservation are important issues for Long Island, but the focus of our, our discussion here today is, um, is our instant efforts to deal with the nitrogen problem. But this is a, uh, a model of the Water Quality Protection District that uh, I kind of conceived on behalf of the county executive. I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about it now, but as you can see, if it were implemented as designed, uh, it would provide significant uh, annual proceeds on a recurring basis to address all of these needs. And most importantly, if you look in the middle of it, um, in Suffolk County being as diverse as, as it is, uh, having public confidence in a countywide entity is both a critical need and a significant challenge. And you know, we still think it's a good idea to let the people decide whether or not to, uh, to invest in water quality protection. We, uh, we'll continue to have that discussion with, um, with elected officials. And of course, as, we, as we've made clear, we think this is a potentially viable idea, but we don't think we have the exclusive market on, on good ideas. If anybody has a, a suggestion as to how the current proposal could be improved, very anxious to have that discussion. If somebody has an idea that's a, a better idea, that would provide a stable and recurring revenue source and get us to the same place, we're anxious to talk about that too. We're le less anxious to talk to folks who say they don't like our idea, but they don't really have an idea. We're not going to run away from this problem. You know, I'm in it for the long term. The county executive has made clear um, we're not going to stop until we figure out how to derive the revenue we need to allow this conversion. And we're looking forward to working cooperatively with all stakeholders, including elected officials on all levels of government, to, to shape a final solution. Thanks. Now. Please welcome a counterpart from Nassau County, Chief Deputy Executive, Mr. Rob Walker. It's, it's always great being with uh, Peter Scully and uh, County Executive Mangano, County Executive Ballone really have worked together on many issues, but this is one issue I think uh, that we both feel uh, greatly the same way, that it's so important to protect our water, that there is no boundary, as John Cameron said. And, uh, you know, politics plays a, a great deal of problems in many regards. This is one where it does not. Republicans, Democrats, the Senate, the Assembly, the Governor, and all of our elected officials really have worked, uh, you know, a great deal together on making sure we improve our water quality. So, you know, obviously the county is, uh, was looking at ways to, in fact, improve the conditions of the Western Bays. Uh, county Executive Mangano has made this a priority since he took office, uh, looking at every different direction on, on how we can, uh, you know, really solve the problem of the Western Bays. One, we want to work, uh, obviously, with Long Beach. We're working with the city of Long Beach to convert their plant into a pump station. That will actually uh, then be pumped to Bay Park. Now you talk about the residents of Bay Park. They do not want to see more sewage come to their uh, facility in their neighborhood unless you really do some more improvements. Obviously, the ocean outfall becomes that, that, uh, you know, that level of improvement that's needed. And now we are where we are today with a plan that uh, would, would convert. Uh, it's about an eight and a half mile run which will take, uh, take the, treated, the treated effluent from uh, Bay Park uh, up along Sunrise Highway, which the county has owned a pipe 
Uh, it was built uh, in 19, uh, 1906 or somewhere along those lines, so obviously it's a few years old. But uh, an RFP is going to be going out tomorrow, tomorrow for, in fact, the, the inspection of that pipe to see what is, uh, what is needed. That pipe then will uh, connect to, directly to the Cedar Creek Ocean Outfall, similar to what was done in working with the state in Zacks Bay, where we connected the Zacks Bay, uh, or lack of better words, Zacks Bay and Jones Beach, the outfall to, in fact, Cedar Creek Outfall, cleaned up those waters tremendously, and this will be another way to clean up uh, the, you know, the Western Bay. At the same time, we are moving forward with some you know, denitrification. That's the pipe that's that the, the direction we're actually talking about doing it. We are actually doing some denitrification processes and programs as we speak. We're not waiting for the ocean outfall to cure the Western Bay problem. We're, we know it's a situation that's only going to get worse. We want to improve it for storm improvements, uh, you know, to make sure that we have additional uh, hardening. And we want to make sure that we have a beautiful recreational opportunity available to you know, those that live there and have some uh, growth back of the, uh, of the area. Those, uh, those opportunities that I'm talking about in terms of BNR is the side stream treatment, which will reduce uh, the nitrogen by 15%. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here, and uh, I look forward to working with all of you. Now our next speaker represents residents of a Long Island town that's geographically larger than all of Nassau County, with two coastlines and a barrier beach. And he will explain how local efforts can have big benefits. Brookhaven Supervisor Ed Romain will explain. So my plan was to reduce, and we are working on plans that will reduce development near watersheds, stream corridors, and bodies of water. We were able to extend the Pine Barrens to the entire Commons watershed. That watershed will be protect. Commons River is one of four rivers that we have on Long Island, all four in Suffolk County, two of which are in Brookhaven, the Peconic and Commons. Commons is totally within the town. We also decided, on, and we barked on a plan, to start acquiring all the land that we could and all of our watersheds, stream corridors, and bodies of water. Tonight, the town board will adopt a plan called the Nitrogen Protection Zone that will go into effect on January 1st of 2017. And this plan says if you build anything, regardless of its residential, industrial, commercial, within 500 feet of any body of water, including Lake Ronkonkoma, in the town of Brookhaven, you must be able to demonstrate a discharge of eight milligrams per liter of nitrogen or less. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Well, if you have a septic or a cesspool, you're producing somewhere between 50 and 60 milligrams per liter. I am particularly interested in the county's efforts or an alternative source for nitrogen removal. We will not be able to sue this county. Alternative systems are very important. I also look at sewers and I'm concerned because I look at some of the sewage treatment plants in my town, Patchog, Port Jeff, Stony Brook, they discharge the bodies of water. We are going to take our backyard, we're on Independence Hill right next to Bald Hill, and plant all native grasses under a grant that we have so we can reduce our fertilizer. And talking about fertilizer, at our town hall, and I want to talk about public policy, because sometimes the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. We have a sewage treatment plant there. It has 26,000 gallon per day capacity. We're using 6,000. Right next door is Sachem East, a high school of 4,000 students. They're all uncessables. They're less than 500 feet away from our sewage treatment plant. That the health department or the education department or whoever is responsible would not have mandated that they connect to our sewage treatment plant befuddles me. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Romaine. Well, when it comes to national and global environmental issues, you may have heard prominent politicians on TV and on the radio say, I'm not a scientist. 
Well, our next group of speakers are scientists and all are working to discover and develop technologies for reducing nitrogen pollution and improving water quality for Long Island. Our first speaker among this tech team is Stony Brook University professor, Dr. Chris Gobler. Good morning, everyone. Um, I was asked today, if we fix the nitrogen problem, what can we expect? And we also know that last year, uh, the problems with excessive nitrogen loading were readily apparent throughout Nassau County, throughout Suffolk County. Uh, if I wanted to do some highlights, I could pull out the massive fish kill in the Riverhead area, the unprecedented death of hundreds of diamondback terrapin turtles uh, in the same area within a two week span from, and, and these two events being caused by two different types of algal blooms, but both of which were caused by excessive nitrogen. Uh, I could talk about uh, the, the fact that 70% of the sites that we monitor for oxygen fall below the New York State standard. Uh, or the fact that Suffolk County, with 16 ponds experiencing blue-green algal blooms, uh, have more blue-green algal blooms in Suffolk County than any other county in New York State by far. Um, but what I want to talk about is what happens when you do take action. I'm going to start just across Long Island Sound in Mumford Cove, Connecticut. This is an area, here's the cove here, there was sewage being discharged directly into the cove. Uh, and the area had almost no seagrass. But then there was the effort made to divert that sewage. It was pulled out of the cove, sent further out, uh, out into Long Island Sound. And look at what happened. You can see uh, the nitrogen levels went from being very, very high, a level we know would be toxic to seagrass, which is very sensitive. It only needs, you only need a small amount of nitrogen to see the seagrass vanish. Uh, but then when they put in the diversion of the sewage treatment plant, the nitrogen levels drop, and there goes the seagrass taking off. Uh, and as a very brief narrative, I'll just show that uh, the sewage was going into that cove for, uh, since the middle of the 20th century, that cove was mostly seaweeds. Uh, no seagrass, and they were having uh, paralytic shellfish poison uh, occurrences on their shellfish. I'll talk more about that momentarily. They divert the wastewater, the seaweed coverage in one year dropped from 75 to 9 percent, one year. So there's a response right away. Uh, they have not seen PSP since. So this is Connecticut, but what about in New York? So we've talked a lot about sewage treatment plants. How about the Bergen Point sewage treatment plant? Well, um, that serves a large portion of the southwest part of Suffolk County. And in around 1980, the effort was made to, instead of having the sewage going directly into Great South Bay, it was diverted to the ocean. Uh, and how did the ecosystem respond to that? There's, there's the, let's see what was the proof, what happened? Well, first of all, here are the nitrogen levels. There's a lot of scatter because there's seasonal variability. But you can see, just like in Connecticut, the nitrogen levels dropped. So the poster child for these PSP events, uh, going back about a decade ago, was more Northport Bay and Huntington Bay. An effort was made to address some of the nitrogen loading issues here, specifically the Northport sewage treatment plant, back in the back part of the harbor. Turns out this is the area where all of these paralytic shellfish poisoning events would start. That was the nexus and it would spread out from there. They upgrade the sewage treatment plant. We went for a time period up until from 2006 to 2012 where every year this place was closed uh, due to paralytic shellfish poisoning, dropped the nitrogen, has not been an event since. By addressing all the, uh, the discharge and make sure the pipes were working for the sewage treatment plant, the most contaminated beach in all of New York State was reopened. It had been closed for seven years. The county actually threw up their hands and said, we're not even going to monitor anymore because it's so polluted. Uh, but when they upgraded the plant, there was a request to start looking again, and the beach was clean and it reopened. So I'll leave you with those conclusions that we have, we know excessive nitrogen loading is the problem. Uh, we know that reducing the nitrogen has benefits to across the world, but specifically here in Long Island. Uh, and now we're, we're going to do something about it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And our next speaker, also visiting us from Stony Brook University, please welcome the Associate Director of SBU's Center for Clean Water Technology, Jen Garvey. Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm Jen Garvey from the Center for Clean Water Technology, and we are essentially a research and development initiative that is focused on the, uh, the development and commercialization of more cost-effective water quality protection and restoration technologies. And naturally, we are focusing first on individual on-site wastewater, given the unprecedented need here in, on Long Island. 
And uh, my role today is sort of to, re to report on some of the progress in this area. And uh, I'm actually going to focus on one system in particular that we think is potentially a near-term solution. Uh, and so that, that, that's where I'll, I'll focus my talk today. Just to, to get us started on the, on the type of approach that we're talking about, um, this is a, a non-proprietary passive system actually. And to give you just, this is, this, is, this is the very system that we're talking about. This is a, a nitrogen removing biofilter. This is, what, this is what we're calling nitrogen removing biofilter. And so I'll just say that I know to an extent the cats are the bag a little bit about this approach. People have been talking about it. But if you're calling it something that sounds like food, like a layer cake or a sandwich, let's call it this. <laughs> let's call it a nitrogen removing biofilter. Um, and so, very simply, this is, as a passive system, it means that it is, it, is, it is a simple system. It is simply designed. It is comprised of locally sourced materials. Um, it, is, it has few moving parts and operates largely by gravity, and thus it is low maintenance, low energy, and, we hope, low cost. And so the, the basic components of this system are a sand layer. It's a sand, this is their, their nitrifying biofilter, a sand layer, um, followed by a, a layer of sand mixed with lignocellulose or uh, dry plant matter wood, finely processed wood chips. And that forms the, you know, that, that's where uh, denitrification happens. And so just to give you a sense of how this sort of fits into the, the bigger picture of, of wastewater treatment on Long Island, um, obviously we're all familiar with uh, the traditional septic tank and septic rings, uh, the traditional form of, of septic system on Long Island. Uh, but the, the way the rest of the, the nation primarily treats its wastewater is through leach fields or drain fields where effluent, the septic tank effluent was pi piped over a kind of a larger area. And our nitrogen removing biofilter more closely mimics that setup. And so this is potentially a look at what, you know, what might be available to us in the future. So let's talk about performance, because this is why we're so excited about the system. Um, it's still, of course, in a pilot phase. We have a lot of work to do to sort of bear this out, to demonstrate it locally, and see the, how, how, it, how it performs in, in local conditions and at different, different households, which obviously vary widely. Um, but these, these systems are showing a really impressive ability to remove up to 90% of nitrogen consistently. They're also showing incredible removal of pharmaceuticals and personal care products. And, you know, this is, this is, this is potentially a, a much greater performance. In fact, it's performance that exceeds that of some of the most advanced wastewater treatment systems. But if you have any questions, please do let us know, but uh, we're, we're excited to be talking about this approach. What an amazingly comprehensive conference. Each of the morning speakers reported to us and, as you know, to each other about their ongoing tireless efforts to protect and improve the quality of Long Island's water. I consider myself a reasonably well-informed person about Long Island, but this was an education. I'm sure it was for many of us. Let's have a round of applause for all of our presenters today. The news, of course, is encouraging, but we must all have the courage to continue and the confidence that our efforts will be rewarded in our time and for the benefits of those who follow. Let's think about this. Do we want future generations to say about us, what were they thinking? Or, well, thanks to you, the outcome can be, wow, thank goodness they were thinking and working and doing. I'm David North. It's been an honor to have a role in this informative and inspiring presentation, and we look forward to reporting the progress of all of our participants in the coming year and providing another update about the quality of Long Island's water in 2017. Enjoy this beautiful day on Long Island. Thank you. Excellent presentation, I thought, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, join us again next time when we're going to begin to talk in depth to people involved in the efforts to clean up Long Island's water. We'll continue this throughout the remainder of the year, so stay tuned. Kathleen Asta will be back. I'm Dick Amper. Thanks for watching.
the Long Island Pine Barrens. Let's protect them.